Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mystical and welcome to another episode of Tarot Tuesday, this time episode number 36, Zombie Does Tarot. I'm Dr. Mystical and tonight we're going to be reading with the Zombie Tarot, which is a fun uh, fun and kitsch deck, which follows along with the Rider Waite. And so that's the deck I decided to use because, hello Jennifer, how are you? Well, because we haven't seen the Zombie Tarot in a while. Hey Cheyenne, how are you? And I thought it might be a fun... Uh, might be a fun deck to take a look at. Uh, I've been feeling a little bit like death warmed over for the last couple of days, and so um, you sure can, Talisha, absolutely. Uh, I've been feeling a little bit like death warmed over, so I figured maybe the zombie deck might snap me out of it. Plus, you know, what's, what's good for us is a little bit brains, brains, brains. So if you are joining the broadcast, and you can hear me fine and everything looks good on your end, you know, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart. Let me know uh, in the feed um, that's, um, that you can hear me. I'm very good, Cheyenne, and I can, yes, I can absolutely add you to the list. Um, sure, Carrie Elizabeth will add you as well. Uh, do, 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 do. Sure, Kathy will add you to the list as well. Uh, sure, Lake Khan will add you to the list as well. So, boy, everybody's jumping in. Uh, I did not get you, Shayla, but I'm going to get you now. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm doing okay. It's just, you know, just a little, probably not hydrated enough, honestly. Hi, hey, Chris Adams, how are you? Hey, Stephanie CC, how are you? I'll add you to the list, Stephanie. Um, it sure has been a while, Aaliyah. How have you been? If you're in Western New York and you need a massage therapist, Aaliyah is the person you want to go see. Um, Joy will add you to the list as well. Um, so if I didn't get you on the list, uh, do, 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 let me just scroll up and make sure I didn't miss anybody. Uh, it doesn't look like I did get you, Shayla. Um, hello, Chris. How are you? Um, so uh, if you are just joining the show, <clears throat> let me know. Give me a thumbs up or a heart on the feed and, and let me know. Um, that you, uh, thank you, Kathy, that you, uh, that you can see the feed and, uh, we'll get going here in a couple minutes. Just a few, a few announcements. Hello, Cassandra. Oops. I dripped some water. Got a hole in my lip. I have a hole in my lip. Sure. Cassandra, I'll add you to the list as well. Um, hello, Jessica. How are you? Hello, Cassie. How are you? Uh, okay, Cassie, I got you. So um, just a few announcements. Uh, one, I want to thank anybody who, I want to thank the folks who uh, scheduled um, a reading with me over the last week. I really do appreciate that. Um, that it does, a, it does a lot to support the show and what we're doing. So that's, uh, yes, just you have to ask. Hey, Kim, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, so that helps out. It supports the show and, and the work that we're doing. So I really do appreciate that. It's called a... a Libre. What is called the Libre? <laughs> um, so, um, yep. Thank you, Cheyenne, for saying that. If you, you know, if you think somebody should be in the broadcast, share the feed out or tag them in a comment. That'd be great. So, if you scheduled a reading with me or had a reading with me this week, thank you so much for your trust and for scheduling that. It does a lot to support the show. Uh, you may have noticed that on my YouTube channel, I've started a new weekly podcast called The Manifestations Podcast. Um, this kind of was born out of the Q&A live videos that we were doing here on Facebook. Um, and I thought that certainly the Q&A is a lot of fun and we'll continue to do that. But I, what I realized is that um, I could use a couple of minutes a week to talk about uh, topics that are going on uh, spiritually or otherwise that um, just needs a little bit of attention. So this week we're actually doing two podcasts. One was yesterday, or you may have seen it today. Um, and the next one will be on Friday. And moving forward, they're gonna be on Friday. So um, if you haven't seen that video, check, check out my YouTube channel. There's a link in the show description uh, that you can find it. Uh, and check it out, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you think there should be changes or whether you like the topics or not, or if you have a suggestion for a topic. Let me know. I'm happy to take those, but I've got a schedule uh, built out where we can kind of accomplish 
some a little bit of kind of education or a little bit of at least information passing. So I really appreciate that. I am still working on the multi-stream feed and deciding whether to go ahead and purchase um, the restream uh, account so that we can increase the likelihood of seeing all the comments. Uh, I just haven't gotten to that point yet. So that's what's going on. Uh, and then, hey, good news. My 40 servants uh, larger deck has is in the mail. I'm hoping to have it next week. So I'll show that off as well and get some other things going on. Uh, well, I'm glad that you are back and uh, the lip piercing. No, this was just me drooling. That's all it was. <laughs> Hello, Christina. How are you? Um, Jennifer, I did not get you, but I will add you to the list. So um, if you're new to the show, welcome to the show. Uh, I'll try to catch the new people um, so that we have a little bit of a Tarot Tuesday welcome wagon. So hopefully you can get in with that. Uh, and then... Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. You can watch Jessica. That's certainly fine. Uh, yeah, Christina, we'll add you to the list as well. So um, that's what's going on in the land of Dr. Mystical. Um, readings and uh, more content out there on the YouTubes, uh, trying to get that put together and, and do a little bit more work over there. <laughs> So, hi, Lorianne, how are you? Oh, you're so nice, Cassandra, thank you. Sure, Stacy. I'll add you to the list as well, absolutely. So let's not spend any more time unless you have, <clears throat> unless you have some questions that you want to see answered, but let's get right on with the reading, shall we? So again, if you're just joining us, um, we're reading from the Zombie Tarot. This deck is probably five or six years old at this point. It has a corresponding deck called the Housewife Tarot, which is right there uh, by the same people. The artistry is very kitsch, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, if you are interested in the deck, there's a link in the show description. Full disclosure, I'm an Amazon affiliate, so if you purchase um, decks through my links, you do not pay more. But I get a little bit of a proceeds to help uh, some proceeds to help support the show. Uh, Amazon just informed me that I'm coming up on my 180 day trial ver trial run of being an affiliate and as of yet have not met their bar of success. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so because you were so close, but uh, all right, Morgan, I've added you to the list as well. So, um, so there we go. So if you're ready for some zombie action, are you ready for some zombie action? You ready to have your brains devoured by the zombie tarot? If you are, let me know. Hit the smiley face. Hit the wow face in the feed and let me know. Hi, Deirdre. How are you? If you are just joining the show and you'd like a reading, uh, get your name in now because uh, we read until 10 o'clock and then we are done. We are done. So... So let me shuffle it up. Talisha, you did super good. Hi from South Africa, Daryl. Um, you did super good getting in, and I know that you try so hard to get in on the feeds, and you got in first. You got in first. So let's get your card going, shall we? So here we have, <clears throat> I apologize. I still have not figured out the autofocus on this damned webcam. It's a new webcam, too. Like It's not like an old busted rat, uh, webcams, just the autofocus does not work as well as I'd like it to work. So um, for you, Talisha, we have the five of cups, right? So that's the five of cups. If you can see, it's a little blurry. Um, the five of cups, the, the suits here correspond um, with what we know in the rider weight. So if you are new to the show, you're going to get suits, you're going to get cards, you're going to get a reading, you're going to get a little bit of education all on the way. I'm not a doctor for nothing, you know. So uh, for you, Talisha, it's the five of cups. And as you know, I read from kind of zero or ace to 10 in terms of progress along a path. And cups deals with kind of, it's a suit of emotions. It's a suit of our relationships. It's a suit of our emotionally important relationships. So yes, sometimes this is about romantic love, but a lot of times it's about just emotionally important relationships to us. So it could be a child or it could be a parent or it could be um, a spouse or a friend or things like that. So um, so for you, 
you've been kind of going along the way, Talisha, through this process, this emotional journey, if you will. And you're at a point now where you're kind of, you're kind of past the uh, getting to know you phase, past the beginning phases, but not yet quite at the, um, quite at the kind of the more mature sense of this relationship, right? Five being right, right in the middle. And so here's the thing. What you see in the card symbolically is a man or a woman and a, and a child grieving over their grave. Remember, it's, a, it's zombies, right? So in the background are zombies. Um, so really what this card has to say to you is that you're in the middle of this path. You're past the beginning stages, but not yet move, working towards the end. And you're at, a, you're at a pivot point right now. And you can mourn a little bit of some of the the newness, the kind of fresh relationship smell that you get, right? That kind of excitement and newness of the relationship. But don't mourn too long here because what's in front of you is a growth and a maturity through this relationship. And that's something that you don't need to mourn. But as we know from most relationships in our lives, it, it kind of spikes and then it kind of grows in a different direction, right? And that's where you are right now with, 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 with an important relationship in your life. I feel like this relationship is very close to your family. And so while you may be mourning what was a, a little bit, know that what's coming for you um, is that much greater and will propel you along the path for the next emotional relationship or project that you're working on. So that's for you, Talisha. If that makes sense, of course, as you know, leave a comment in the box and let me know that it makes sense. That's great if it resonates with you. All right, so here's who I have on my list after Talisha. I'm gonna read the whole list. If you put a comment in the box and I, Daryl, uh, absolutely, I'll add you to the list. And I did not get you, it's not because I'm ignoring you, it's because the comments um, don't flow as well on Facebook as I would like them to. So here's the list after Talisha. Cheyenne, Carrie Elizabeth, Kathy, Lake Khan, uh, Shayla, Stephanie CC, Aaliyah, Joy, Cassandra, Cassie, Jennifer, Christina, Stacy, Morgan, and Daryl. And if I didn't get you, um, there's still there's still time, still time. We get about we get about 20 readings in in an hour, which is a pretty good run. <laughs> That's a pretty good run for an hour. I don't know if you've ever been to a psychic fair, but you're not getting 20 readings done in an hour. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. So yeah, mourn it for a little while. That's okay. You're allowed to, but um, know that the rest is coming. So it's lake and like bacon. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. <laughs> I'm going to write that down and I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad that you said that because it's your name. Sure, Kim, I'll add you. Because it's your name, and you know I always want to get it right, but I'm guessing a lot of the time. So. But thank you for pointing that out. Hello, Nicole. How are you? All right, Cheyenne, this one's for you. So, so Cheyenne, we have the Two of Wands. The Two of Wands. So Wands, as you know, is a suit of work, effort. Right? It's the thing you do to get the thing you want. Right, and the two of wands suggests that you're in a very kind of new work project, uh, and you have a choice to make in terms of which direction you want to go in left or right, back or forward, north or south. You're at a decision point on where to go. You've taken the first step into this project, which is the most important step, right? A lot of times that's where we stop. We stop before we take the first step and say it can't be done. You took a little bit of a leap of faith in this project into this effort, this work that you're doing. But right now you're at a decision point. You haven't got a lot of ground. You don't have a lot of experience, but you know that you need to go in some direction now. So what you need to do really is kind of weigh your options. Um, and that's what the two of wands would, the two of wands here would suggest. Which way is your zombie gonna run? Which way is your zombie gonna run? You wanna be going in the different direction, right? You don't want somebody chasing you. You want to be free and clear. And so you need to kind of make that decision about which path right now um, works best for you. 
And I think the zombie is, I think the zombie analogy is pretty appropriate here. The path for you is the one that's not going to have so much, um, so much kind of history following it. That's the sense I'm getting is that one choice is to kind of follow something that's been familiar to you and one in that, that you can bring some history with, but the other path is moving in a different direction. And Cheyenne, I think for you, that's where you need to be working towards. That's where you need to put the effort, the work, and the tasking in your life is towards this new direction and moving your, moving the way you work towards that. So, <laughs> Well, Lakin, you should still correct me. <laughs> I work with all kinds of people and all kinds of names. Um, and your name is really important. Spirit says your name is important. And I want to make sure I honor that. All right, so that's for you, Cheyenne. If that makes sense, leave a comment in the box and let me know. And that brings us to Carrie Elizabeth. Did I finish reading the list? I totally, I totally blanked on the list. Carrie Elizabeth, Kathy, Lakin, Shay, uh, Shayla, Stephanie, CC, Aaliyah, Joy, Cassandra, Cassie, Jennifer, Christina, Stacy, Morgan, Daryl, and Kim. That's who I have on my list ahead of me. So, Carrie Elizabeth, let's get you. Oops, let's get you read. That your card's just jumping off the deck here. So, we'll just grab it and grab it and read it. Grab it and read it. All right, Carrie Elizabeth, for you, it's strength. So strength is a major arcana card, which means that we want to pay attention to these. The major arcana messages are really critical. Um, if you get a full tarot reading, uh, the major arcana cards are often the crux, the critical point, or the um, pivot point for a, a, a reading, right? So you want to pay attention to the messaging around strength. Um, strength in the rider way is really about strength and control it's about balance and in this deck it's the imagery kind of intuitively is a little bit yours do almost always jump out you must have a lot of energy gary um but for you strength really is it is about strength but it's i want you to think about it in terms of strength in power right power so you look at this image you can see that there's there's bullets and bullets and to me kind of intuitively talk about power and the fact that they're kind of showing this bullet inside of a head talks about control or precision. And so for you right now, Carrie, you need to be very, very focused on your power. Um, and I think that for you, the power kind of gets applied almost kind of is a blanket, right? You apply power in every direction and whichever direction seems to be getting some traction, that's where you move towards. This card is going to pull you back a little bit. It's going to say, use your power with precision now. The, the obstacle that you're up against requires that power, but it can't be just used willy-nilly. It's got to be used really carefully. So think about this in terms of strength, in terms of power and precision, but also I want you to, there the whispers, spirits whispering in my ear that this is about kind of diplomacy and using power very carefully. And I think that that's an important message for you. Um, given the tenor of our times, maybe it's an important message for all of us. So but there you go. Hmm. Well, thanks, Deirdre. I, I like to do it. It's a lot of fun. And so I enjoy doing it. All right. So that was for you, Carrie Elizabeth. If that makes sense, uh, let me know. Kathy, you're up next. Come on, man. La Shalia. Last week, someone said it's Shayla, and I've been saying it's Shalia for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Oh, Shalia. All right. I'm going back to Shalia. <laughs> I do remember the Irish, but I got corrected last week. And so I tried to be, I tried to honor that correction. But I'm moving, I'm going back. I'm going back to Shalia. So that's for you. All right, Shaylee, I apologize. And I'm really, I'm tough on the names this week. I'm also writing your and your wrong all week. All right, Kathy, this one's for you. So, Kathy, for you, this is um, 
This is the Four of Cups. Now, again, we saw cups earlier uh, in Talisha's reading, um, but so we know that cups is a suit of emotions. It's a suit of um, emotionally important relationships in our lives. Yes, those can be romantic. No, they're not always romantic. Uh, but the Four of Cups suggests that you're welcome, Shalia. Um, thank you for correcting me. Um, so um, the Four of Cups um, here kind of suggests, again, from one to 10 in terms of progress along a path that um, you've been kind of moving in, um, you've been moving in a direction in a relationship that just has not gotten out of the kind of the early phases or uh, the early phases of the relationship, but it's certainly starting to become, you're certainly, things are starting to feel a little bit more um, intertwined, right? Um, there's a certain comfort that's building for you right now. Um, in, what you see here is just, right, you see the character laying on the lap of the other character, which suggests a comfort and a comfort with being vulnerable, uh, and that suggests a, mat a maturation that's happening within the relationship. Um, it also talks about more things to come. Now, the imagery here is also really critically important to understand that zombies will kill the living. Zombies will kill the living. So while you are gaining more trust in this relationship, you are gaining more, um, more comfort in the relationship, especially around your mutual vulnerabilities and your sense of mutual nurturing, just be mindful that um, everybody has a past uh, and that past may not have shown itself in this regard, right? I mean, if you're dating a zombie and you hadn't realized it, there's a secret coming for you and it's an unpleasant brain eating version. So just be mindful that that's there. Um, I would suggest that probably um, that if you were remember back to Talisha's card where we saw the Five of Cups, it kind of suggests that there's a bit of a mourning of that kind of newness that's just ahead of this card, right? So, so that's for you. If that makes sense for you, let me know. Drop a comment in the box. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, Lakin, we're going to get you now. So it's Lakin and then Shalia next. It's the, now I'll be, I should do a review on this deck too. It does not shuffle as easily as I would like it to. The cards are super duper thick, which is nice, but thick cards, while they're beautiful to handle, they don't shuffle well. So what can you do? All right, Lakin, here we got the strength card again. Um, and I am shuffling them. So the strength card, again, talks about power and precision. Uh, for you, this really is more about control right now. So, Lakin, you really need to this. Um, I feel like there's kind of a, a work relationship situation that's, that's kind of swirling around you. Um, and it needs to be addressed. And you really haven't addressed it because you haven't really known how to address it. But, but, and this is important, now is the time for you to kind of exercise this power and precision, but really more about control and around, you're very welcome, Kathy. Um, it, it's really more about uh, control, right? And so there's a little bit of the rider weight thrown in here just for fun, but um, it's about con keep maintaining your own control. It's about breathing deep. It's about you know, it's a, it's about being precise. It's about being controlled and careful. So for you, like, and that's really what's going on. I feel like this is around a work situation. I feel like this is around relationships or interpersonal issues at work. And they're relying on your kind of experience here. You need to be relying on your power, precision, and sense of control. They're looking to you for calm. And that's where you need to kind of really exert yourself in the sense of control and being able to make effective decisions. Um, that's what the strength card. <laughs> well, that's excellent, Cassandra. I love that you're having a watch party. I'm glad that that's accurate. So that's where you need to spend, be spending your time, Lincoln. So if that makes sense, of course, don't throw your phones. I'm not advocating phone throwing. Uh, just leave a comment in the box and let me know. <laughs> I'd be curious 
I'd be curious. Um, last week we read, um, you can't really see them. They're up there somewhere. Um, <laughs> well, that's excellent that you always have a watch party. That's so much fun. Hey, Rebecca. Sure, I'll add you to the list. Absolutely. Um, last week I was reading with my steampunk oracle dice that are steampunk divination dice. Haven't read with those in a long, long time. Um, so, and Claudia, uh, kind of asked for them. And so was happy to oblige, um, which it's also goes for you. If you have a deck that you'd like to see, um, used, like by all means, let me know and I'll, I'll work it into the weekly rotation. I often don't know until the day before anyway. So, um, and it matters not to me. But uh, I'd be curious what you think between, like, how they are the same and how they are different between reading dice and reading cards. So, so if you have an opinion about that, leave a comment in the box. Um, sure, Nicole. I'll add you to the list. All right, so Shalia, this is you. And it is the Emperor. Now, the Emperor, also a major arcana card, right? So the messaging here is really critical, and it's really for a poignant point in your life. And the Emperor really is about kind of control over the home, control over the home. And so you see the Emperor character. He's standing at the door. The door is barred. Shotgun or rifle in one hand, long gun anyway. Um, Paul Bunyan in the other uh, he's got his son standing behind him, and you can see the look of ferocity and and, and virtue in, in the character's face, right? This really is about being the leader of your family. Now, the tarot follows kind of an emperor-empress kind of dichotomy, right? But it's not about that. It's really about the two sides of being a parent or the two sides of being in charge of a kingdom or a family or a home. And that is that sometimes we need to be very focused on the work, the task, and, and be in kind of the practical leader. And other times would be the more nurturing leader, right? N think about it like no frills and frills. The emperor is a no frills leader, right? This is what must be done. This is what we need to do. But for you, it's not only, it's not just about taking charge, Shalia. It's also about setting up the right protections for your kingdom, for your family, your house, your circle, whatever that may be. And so for you, you really need to step into this role. And I feel like you haven't really wanted to step into the role. And sometimes greatness is thrust upon you. And that's this moment for you. I feel like you're a little hesitant, but spirit wants you to take the seat and be the emperor, set up the kind of the practicality that's needed in this situation, set up the right protections, set up the right processes and procedures so that your kingdom can be, um, can be functional right now and then move forward with a good deal of success and some learning that they can do on their own. So hopefully, hello, Lisa, how are you? So hopefully that makes sense for you, Shalia. Did I add Desiree? Uh, I did not add Desiree. I didn't see her on the list, but uh, in the comment box. But like we talked about, Facebook is weird with comments. Uh, one day I'm going to like, I'll broadcast the stream and me so you can see the weirdness that happens. Yeah, I don't even see Desiree on the list. I'm sorry, Desiree, but I'll add you to the list. All right, so this brings us to Stephanie CC. Hello, Natasha from Australia. Good day to you too. What's good day for good evening? What's good day for good evening? It's nine o'clock here. It's pretty late. I'm very well, thanks, Lisa. All right, so Stephanie CC, this one's up. This one's for you. Let's see what's going on with in the world of Stephanie CC. And this is the three of hazards. So the three of hazards. This is different in the Rider Waite. <laughs> um, th you're thank you for being patient, Desiree. Um, the three of hazards. Oh, I'm sorry. The three of hazards is really the is the suit more dealing with swords, okay? I think. Let me see. I think that it is. Let me just no, it's not swords. It's oh, three of hazards is pentacles. It's pentacles. Um <laughs> sorry. Sorry, been a while since I read this deck. So three of hazards, this suit deals with um this seal deals with pentacles. Pentacles is the resources, it's the things we use to get the things we want, right? And the three of pentacles is kind of about 
be um, kind of coming into a little bit of newness with your resources. Uh, maybe you've had a bit of a windfall. Uh, you've got more energy or more money than you're used to having. Uh, maybe this is a three paycheck month for you. Jesus reading might be for me. Sorry. Um, and it kind of, it suggests a bit of a playfulness and a bit of, a bit of kind of using, uh, using hazards and pentacles to kind of, uh, exercise the joys of your life, right? Give yourself some of the uh, luxury items or necessities that you need. Um, but it also urges caution that at this time it's okay, but you need to very quickly get that back under control so that it doesn't become a danger for you or a weakness for you. Pentacles is always kind of sitting right on the razor's edge of do you use them or do you not use them? And that's the same here for hazards is, that, that money or resources can be a benefit and they can be something terrible for you uh, or, or cause a lot of pain. And so that's where you are right now. You're using it for good and that's fine. Just be mindful that it's not going to last forever. If you spend away all your resources, you won't have anything for a rainy day. And that's where you are right now, Stephanie. So whatever the windfall is right now, enjoy. Enjoy that greatly. Uh, be mindful and be prudent moving forward. There's a long journey ahead for this. So if that makes sense for you, let me know. <laughs> well, then Natasha, it's just good day, I suppose. Well, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that you joined me. How do you get a reading? Well, very easily done, Natasha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Daryl, there you go. It's for, you just asked for one. So I'll add you the list. Here's the deal, Natasha, because it's I would imagine that you're, this is your first time. And that's great. Welcome to the show. Uh, everybody, welcome Natasha. She's new to the show. As well as Jessica. Um, I read until 10 o'clock, so about another 30 minutes or so. Uh, and, then I'm, and then I do it again next week. So that's kind of how we go. Um, so the show is a weekly show. We do it for an hour. Um, and we try to read as many people as we can. We usually get to about 18 or 20. So there you go. Yep, so there you go. Hi, Christina. You're back again. Yeah, there you go. Ebbs and flows. Good for you, Stephanie. All right. So, Aaliyah, this one's for you. All right, Aaliyah, again, we see hazards. We see the four of hazards. Now, with Stephanie CC, we just saw the three of hazards, right, which suggested kind of a bit of a windfall and using that money to maybe make up ground or to get some luxury items that she might need. But urging prudence on well, the four of hazards suggest the very same thing but one step later right one step later this is a time for you to be starting to store your resources so the things you use to get the things you want maybe it's money maybe it's energy in the case of this card right it's food stores and what you see in the kind of the the card or the 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 imagery of the card is you have somebody who's sitting in his kind of storm shelter, zombie shelter, and stockpiling different amounts of food. The four of hazards suggest the lesson we learned from the three of hazards, which is that you can use the money or use the resources as you need to, but be prudent and be mindful that you now need to start kind of storing it back up. And so for you, and I really feel like, Aliyah, this is about energies, but it also might be about money for you. Um, but it's about energy. It's the things we use to get the things we want that you might have been kind of spending it out a little bit. And now's the time to be start to replenish your stores, replenish your energies, replenish your money um, so that you're prepared um, for the next thing. So just about reminding yourself about the prudence of life and reminding yourself about how to store the right things, store the right things. Who else is new on the broadcast? If you're new, if this is your first time, drop a comment in the box. Just say it's your first time. Don't be shy. We've all had firsts in our lives, right, friends? We've all had firsts in our lives. We'll be gentle on you, I promise. All right, so this brings us to Joy, and then it's Cassandra, Cassie, Jennifer, Christina, and others after that. I just won't read the whole list. So, Joy, this one's for you, okay? Get in, the, get in that deck. So this one's for you, Joy. And we have the Knight of Cups. So, um, oh, it's Nicole's time, first time as well. Good for you. Um, so welcome, Nicole, to the group. Everybody drop a comment in the box. Welcome, Nicole, to the group. Um, so 
for you, Joy, it's the Knight of Cups. And we saw cups earlier. We've seen it a couple times tonight. It's about uh, relationships. <laughs> uh, hang, I'll, I'll get that question in a second, Natasha. It's a good question. Um, it's about the Knight, the Knight of Cups. Is, cups is about emotionally important relationships. And the Knight of Cups, the, that's the Knight of Cups card. And a little closer. This is a little fuzzy. The end camera doesn't autofocus the way I'd like it to be. Hello, Angelina. How are you? Um, and the Knight of Cups suggests that there is a change coming in your relationship. There's a lot of imagery in this card suggesting change. There's a lightning storm above, the dark skies, a lightning storm. But there's also kind of a sense of travel going on in the card. But I also want you to think about what the Knight's job is. The Knight's job is to address change in the kingdom. And the king sends the Knight to make that change happen. This isn't like, hey, I don't like that dress, put on a red dress. This is like something seriously needs to change in the scope of your relationship. And that's coming for you. What's behind you, so if you're this character, what's behind you are these dark stormy skies. And there's been a lot of conflict around an emotional relationship in your life, a lot of highly charged emotions, the lightning. And now is it a time for you to change? What I get a sense of is that you have a choice to make. You can leave this behind and be free of it, and that would be a comfortable experience for you. But if you were to stay and go back into the mall with all the zombies, and that was your choice, that there is a tremendous amount of work ahead. That's not even psychic. It's not even tarot. It's just reality, right? You can do one or the other. What I get a sense for you is you're leaning towards kind of turning and walking away and moving into safety. The Knight of Cups tells you that there's a change coming and it's time for you to kind of make that decision and move on. Remember, Joy, that the longer we ignore spirit, the louder the volume gets on doing what we need to do, okay? So that's where you are right now, Joy. Let me know if that makes sense to you. Drop a comment in the box. And uh, just let me know. Just let me know. So that brings us to Cassandra, then Cassie. Cassandra, then Cassie. Cassie, are you also a Cassandra? But you go by Cassie? I'm curious. You don't have to answer either. You can say, Dr. Mystical, that is none of your damn business. All right. Cassandra, for you, it's the Nine of Swords. Now, swords is a great suit, especially for zombies. What a great weapon for zombies, right? Swords are great for this. We all love swords. Swords is a suit of the mind, right? It's a suit of thoughts and ideas. And the nine of swords suggests to me that you've kind of, no, just, oh, it's just Cassie. Good for you. That's so fun. Yes. Oh, well, tonight, Cassandra, you're going by Cassandra. And this is your card. <laughs> um, so... So the Nine of Swords suggests that you are pretty far along in this thinking, um, this thought project that you've been working on. I feel like you've been kind of working, Cassandra, on a, kind of an idea around, um, it, this feels like an idea for providing, an idea for providing for maybe your family or for yourself, and that's kind of what Spirit's whispering in my ear. But, um, but you're pretty far along in this project. You may have even experimented a little bit. And if you look at the card, I'm just going to take a look at it. There's been a lot of things going on um, where you've needed some help to come, come, kind of come along and push this project forward. But um, it's now time for you to kind of bring this project to its, to its conclusion or to its jumping off point, right? Enough thinking and it's time to start getting ready for this action. So I think that you're an obsessive planner. I think you spend a lot of time seeking the wisdom of others, which isn't a terrible trait at all. But I don't want you to get paralyzed by your analysis. I want you to, <laughs> I want you to kind of think about, uh, I'm so glad, Joy. Um, I, I want you to start thinking about taking all this thought, all this conversation, there's like swirling voices around this for me, and start moving it into some action for you. So you've been thinking a lot about it, Cassandra. It's now time to move this forward into, um, into its completion. 
um, right? So if it's if it's development of a business plan, I don't feel like it's I feel like it's time for implementation, not more planning. I'm not saying turn this off. I'm just saying it's time to move into the next phase. And that's the thing about reading the the minor arcana in a pathway is that the path just takes us to the next place, and then we begin again. All right, so that's Cassandra. Now Cassie, who is just Cassie. And not just Cassie, you are only Cassie. And your card just jumped right out, so we'll just we'll just take that one, shall we? And it's the four of hazards. It just jumped right on the right on the plate. So Cassie, we saw this earlier with Aaliyah. And the four of hazards suggests that um, you've been kind of in a new vein with your resources for a while, <clears throat> but it's time to, it, that's starting to settle down for you. Um, and you're starting to get a sense of uh, your budget of energy, your budget of resources, your budget of money, and how you can spend that. I think it's time. Is it time? Feels like time to me. Time's a good resource. And it's time for you to start uh, being more prudent, more judicious. Uh, start to save that a little bit because what's coming for you is a lot of work that's going to require more effort and it's going to require more resource. So for you, Cassie, it, right now it's about kind of being a little bit more conservative with your resources. Be a little bit more cautious. Remember that no is a perfectly acceptable answer or not right now is a perfectly acceptable answer. Again, Cassie, this sounds to me like time. It sounds to me like time. Do I ever read for myself? Um, I, I do. Um, I do. And I only read a few decks for myself. So, um, And then we'll talk. And then there was another question earlier. I saw it absolutely, and I'm going to get to it uh, right after this one. So the Four of Hazards for you is talking about you being a little bit more judicious, a little bit more prudent. I think the resource here is time and allowing yourself to say no to that because I think you're going to need that time later on and you don't want to be spread too thin, especially in a coming zombie apocalypse. You don't want to be spread too thin. All right, so there was a question earlier. Let me scroll up and grab it. Um, Natasha says, can we ask a specific question to be answered? Um, she applied for an art job, desperately wanting to know if you'll get it and sustain it. Um, here's the thing. The querent, which is you, uh, sets the intention. So you don't have to ask me the question. Uh, you could have just thought about it, and that's fine. But So you asked it, and so we'll answer it. When we get there, we'll answer it for you. If we get there, we'll answer it. How's that? All right, Jennifer, you're up next. Uh, yeah, so it's time for you to pull the trigger, Cassandra. So Daryl says, do you ever read for yourself? The answer to that is yes, uh, but I use, uh, I use decks a little bit. Uh, I, use, I, I don't use all the decks to read for myself. I could, but I don't. I like certain decks more than I like other ones for me. So there we go. All right, so this one's for you, Jennifer. And it is the Nine of Hazards at the good old Dead Mart. <laughs> it's a good old Dead Mart. Nothing like capitalizing on a zombie apocalypse, fine friends. If you own a convenience store, just change the name to Dead Mart. All right, so for you, the Nine of Hazards, remember... There you go, Cassie. Um, so for you, Jennifer, the nine of hazards suggest, again, hazards about resources, right? The things we use to get the things we want. So that's energy, time, money, you know, the things we store up to use to do things, right? So goodbye, Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, so the nine of hazards suggests that you've gotten really, really good at um, not only collecting, but also storing and distributing your resources, especially when it comes to, in my opinion, this is about your family. And this is about how your family uses that. And I feel like this is moving towards, I feel like, Jennifer, this is kind of moving towards like a vacation or some sort of a, a major event or major resource expenditure 
for your family. And you've gotten really good at that. And it's a lot of, it's a tremendous amount of work and organization and time and judgment and being tough and tough on yourself and tough on them. But it's all about to pay off. You've gotten really good at it. And maybe this is the first time that you've ever felt really successful at doing something like that. And I know that feeling. And you're coming up on the conclusion of this project. And that's going to be where you start to finalize the bills. Right now, you're starting to gather all that together. Gather all the information you need to bring this to a successful conclusion. And that's where you are right now. And that's what you need to be doing. Gathering up, starting to pull in. What are the real things that are going to go on? What are the real expensive, the real expenses, the real expenditures of energy, time, and resource? And that's going to be, allow you to finalize the plan and then implement it with, say, the ace of hazards or something like that. But that's where you're going to be. And then it's going to begin again. The good news is each time you do this, Jennifer, the nine of hazards and the 10 of hazards suggest that you're going to be better at it the next time. And you're going to learn more and more lessons. So if that makes sense for you, Jennifer, leave a comment in the box. Hey, Henny, how are you? Uh, yeah, Cassie. So, um, yeah, you just got to, sometimes you got to be judicious about time. You know, one of the things I talk about, I actually think I might talk about this. It's in one of the manifestation podcasts on my YouTube channel. Um, I want to think that it's on the, I think it's on Fridays. We talk, I, I bring out my old adage of obligation is about the other person. It's not about you. And that episode is about this one that I released yesterday is about making deeper connections and uh, why we're constantly seeking to make these deeper connections more so now than ever before. And um, then Fridays is about um, cutting digital cords. So if you're curious, check that out. Let me know what you think. Um, all right. So this brings us to uh, Christina. So it's Christina, Stacy, Morgan, Daryl, Kim, Rebecca, Nicole, Desiree, Natasha. We'll see what we can do. We got about maybe 15, 20 minutes left. So we'll see what we can do. So Christina, for you, it's the world card. The world is on fire, Christina. And that's what this card kind of suggests. Um, the world card is always a card about a lot of work. Um, so... Um, I know it's not like the wheel of fortune. That's not really what this is about. But for you, the world card is really about kind of, um, you can see it in the imagery of this card. It's kind of about preparing for a cataclysmic event in your life. I'm saying it's not, maybe it might not be disastrous, but it is forever life-changing, okay? It's forever life-changing. So the world as you know it, is on fire. You need to be hunkered down right now and preparing yourself for that change that's coming. So this is about you taking, making sure that you're protected, making sure you've got your resources, making sure that you've got um, all your supplies, everything that you need to sustain your life while there's a little bit of chaos and change whirling around you. Um, I feel like I get a lot of nagging voices, Christina, around this. I hear a lot of um, nagging voices and people pulling you in different directions and beating on your zombie shelter. You need to start saying no to that. And you need to say, this isn't okay for me. Um, I, you know, Christina, that's a good question. And, and I said it could be one or the other. I feel like it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of, uh, like one is wrapped in the other, right? That it's a good change, but there's a lot of negativity around it. Like it's like, it's like, it's good for you, but it might piss people off in the process, which is always bad for them. Sometimes they make that hard for you. So I feel like it's a good change, but I feel like there's going to be a little bit of difficulty in making some decisions. Again, the pounding on the zombie shelter where you're like, nope, sorry. These are my, this is my food. <laughs> tough, tough, tough squirrel. You should have saved your own food. Um, and I feel like, so I think it's a good change, but I feel like it's a bit of a separation from a lot of things 
uh, and some hard decisions and hard conversations and hard no's, hard no's to say, um, which is hard for you. It's going to be emotionally charged, but, um, but the world for you is changing. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's kind of an evolution. All right, this brings us to Stacy. So Stacy, Morgan, Daryl, Kim, that's what I've got in the next little while here. So Stacy, for you, we have, um, you're very welcome, Christine. I hope that's helpful for you. Hopefully, hopefully that resonated for you. Um, for you, uh, Stacy, we have the nine of cups. And we've seen cups a few times tonight. Cups is about um, uh, emotions, emotionally charged relationships, emotionally important relationships, rather, uh, love, romance, things like that. And the nine of cups suggests to me, Stacy, that right now you need to um, really take some time to um, really take some time to celebrate or it, it not only like it's not fanfare celebration, but rather a relishing. Uh, it's more it's more contemplative, right? On how far you've come in this relationship that you're in. Um, how hard you've worked, not just yourself, but together. Um, and it's time for you to realize that not only has this relationship benefited you both, but it also really has benefited you alone. You feel more mature. You feel more grown. You feel more like you're able to handle what's going to come next. This isn't the end of that process for you. Uh, it's very near the end of the process. And what you really need to do, be doing right now is kind of taking account of how far you've come, how hard you've worked, how much you've grown, and that's going to put you into the next card, which would be the Ten of Cups, right? Which is the kind of the conclusion of this work project. So I feel like there's just been a lot of emotional drain for you. Um, the, the imagery suggests that, right? The covered up blanket, the shotgun, the paradise behind you, um, that you've just been kind of needing to withdraw a little bit and be within yourself. And that's okay. But just right now it's about an inventory, uh, you know, how hard you've worked, how far you've come, how much you've grown, um, as a person, as a couple, as a, as a pairing, um, and then prepare yourself for the conclusion of this project, um, which will again, allow you to, um, give you an opportunity to celebrate. So hopefully that makes sense for you, Stacy. Um, uh, well, Desiree, if we if we get to you, the good news is that the playback is always available. Um, if you like and follow the page, um, I'll post a link to the playback. It's always on my page if you look under videos, but I also post the playback on uh, YouTube, and you're welcome to go there and and catch it. So. Um, and then because you're kind of towards the end, you would just, you could either watch the whole thing, which I suggest you do, um, or you can scrub up to towards the end. I'm, I'm pretty doubtful though, Desiree, that we'll get there in an hour. All right, Morgan, this brings us to you. All right, we'll just stick you behind there. You're not, you're not wanting to cooperate. So we'll stick those cards behind there. All right. And you got a jumper, you got a leap or two, Morgan. So we'll just set that to the side. So page of wands. Um, you're welcome, Desiree. Uh, the page of wands. Wands is about work, effort, right? And the page of wands is about kind of a bit of a naivete, a bit of a, a juvenile sense of the work that needs to be done. The page is kind of like the stable boy. Um, they're there to learn at the, at the heels of a knight or a king or a whatever, some royalty. And so the page suggests that right now there's a bit of naivete in the work that needs to be done. Now, because you've got a leaper, we're going to attach this work to a card. Now, this doesn't happen all the time, so we're going to attach it to the lovers. And so this naivete about the effort and the work that you need to do really is focused on your relationship. Um, and we're talking about a romantic love relationship, and we're talking about the work that you need to do um, to continue to foster that, right? Because the lovers suggest that the love is 
true. The love is pure. And the love is regardless of the, the zombification of your spouse or that maybe she just ate your finger, whatever, right? It's true love. But there still needs to be work done for that so that you both can feel positive about that relationship. So the, the page of wands suggests that right now you're in a position of kind of a little bit of naivete about the work that's ahead of you. So you want to get clarity around that. But you also want to be comforted that the work on the relationship that you're about to, in, you're about to take on will pay off and does pay off routinely because the love is pure, right? It is it is unconditional. And that's going to give you the confidence and the comfort to try things, to make mistakes at things, to have victories and successes, but also setbacks and failures. And you can rely on the relationship to bring you back to doing the work. So if that makes sense, let me know. Drop a comment in the box. Hi, Chanel. How are you? Oh, you're so nice. Well, I can, I can add to the list, but you keep coming in so late. You keep coming in so late. It's hard to get there. All right. So that was for you, Morgan. Daryl, Daryl is new too. Hi, Daryl. You're new. Everybody welcome Daryl to the, to the show, to Tarot Tuesday. Roll out the Tarot Tuesday welcome wagon for our new friend from South Africa. How many of you watched the video that I posted at 8 o'clock? They're coming to get you, Barbara. The first time I heard that was in Buffalo by a band called Penny Whiskey. And they were playing it for, uh, they were playing it at a small venue. And they were playing it because somebody uh, just graduated from medical school as a neurosurgeon. And they didn't really have songs about brains. So they played that one and I just fell in love with it. Oh, Nike, we have to change your schedule. Who do we talk to about that? Who do we talk to about that? All right, so Daryl, our new friend from South Africa, um, this is for you, and it is the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is, again, about emotionally important relationships. So love, romance, family, friends, whatever, emotionally important relationships. I want to broaden it out from love all the time like lovers, like passionate romance lovers, right? So the queen of cups, now the, want to think about queen in the pairing with the king. And the queen of cups is kind of always the quiet confidant of the king. The queen of cups is going to go to the beach even if there's a storm because the queen of cups has a certain confidence in relationships. And this is, Daryl, the message you need to hear. You're not the queen of cups, but you can be the queen of cups. Um, you need to listen to, um, you need to kind of find somebody who can teach you a little bit about this, but it is about kind of the quiet confidence. It's about listening and observing and being a steady guide for um, the, uh, the other side of this emotional relationship that you have. Um, they, they think of them as the king, right? Decisive, action-oriented, Maybe this is how you feel. And we need to soften that edge a little bit with the queen and allow the queen to be um, observant of the things that are not overt, right? So we're looking for things that are not explicit, but implicit, looking for little messages, little connections. And that's what I think for you, Daryl, like you're missing some of these little connections. You're missing some of the implicit signaling uh, in this relationship. And the queen of cups is going to come to you to help you pay attention to those so that you can make better decisions, make clearer decisions, and make decisions that are more supportive of keeping the kingdom together, right? That's what we want. We want the kingdoms to stay together. And so that's for you, Daryl. If that makes sense for you right now, let me know. Let me know. Leave a comment in the box. And this brings us to Kim. I don't know. We'll, we'll give it a... We're going to give this our damnedest, friends. We're going to give this our damnedest to try to get through it. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do together. No screwing around. Get it done. Get it done. Faster, faster. Faster, Dr. Mister. Read faster. Read faster. Kim, for you, it's the king of swords. 
So we're going to read this in two ways. One is that you could find a new king of swords in your life. Maybe you need a new king of swords. Some king who's can, comfortable with wielding his sword. But really the sword is about thought projects, thoughts, ideas, right? <laughs> Thoughts and ideas, thoughts and ideas. And the King of Swords is about being decisive, decisive, right? So that's what kings, in my mind, to my mind, kings in each suit are about taking decisive, thoughtful, quick action that makes a definitive change. Morgan, you've been thinking about this for a long, you've been thinking about that for a long time. I'm telling you that whatever it is that's been nagging at your mind, you need to do that. I'm a, that's what Spirit whispered in my ear. You've been thinking about this for a long time, and it's time to get going. So, yeah, for you, Kim, you really need, um, you really need that kind of decisive action about the ideas and thoughts that you have. This isn't about being willy-nilly. It's not about making a decision on this and this and this and this and this and going in a million directions, right? The king needs to very, very quickly survey the kingdom, decide what's best, and take that in action through others. And so that's really where you need to be. You've got a lot of ideas right now. You need to narrow that down. You've had a lot of victories, Kim. You've had a lot of successes. You got a lot of trophies on your wall. Now it's time to add one more and allow this next one to gain the benefit of the successes and victories you've already had. So whatever you're up against, whatever idea you've got, now it's time to carry that forward. It seems to me like this is kind of about, it seems to me like this is kind of a decision about what to do with yourself. Um, I feel like you're kind of on the precipice of a decision or a um, eh, precipice, crossroads, um, a decision point of kind of, and they're saying to me, go or stay. Um, I don't really know what that means. It's like directionally, it feels geographic, like go or stay. And you need to kind of just survey it quickly and make a decision and move on. The longer you linger here, the more vulnerable you become. So this brings us to Rebecca with a K. Rebecca with a K, we haven't read you in a while, have we? So Rebecca with a K, this is, this is you. And it is the, the eight of hazards. Yes, I had a, yes. Yes, I had to hold it that far for me. Stop mocking me. I'm getting I'm getting new glasses soon enough. So you get um, you get Rebecca the eight of hazards. So again, hazards equals resources. It's the things you use to get the things you want. And the eight of hazards suggests that you have been really working hard, Rebecca, <clears throat> on kind of saving up this energy. <clears throat> be it money, time, or physical or material goods for a long while. you got all your heads in the jars. It's quite a collection. Um, you've done really good with that. And you, this is a time where you can kind of sit back and admire how hard you've worked, how much you've done. But it's not a time to spend it. It's a time to continue to collect the energy, collect the resource, and admire how hard you've worked. But it isn't a time to expend it. So if you've been sitting on a decision about whether to spend your resources or not, the tarot suggests it is not. Keep all your heads in their jars. Don't take them out to play with them. All right. All right, Nicole, we may get through the, we may get through the list. Nike, and you may get your wish. You may get your wish. Let's see if we can do it. Right, because I read for an hour, but I make commercials throughout. Uh, or in the beginning, so. Um, but before we get into the next four, so it's Nicole, Desiree, Natasha, and Nike, and these are the next, these are the last four. Um, thank you so much for, you know, thank you if you're new to the show, thank you for finding me and joining. Uh, please like and follow the page. Uh, that little bit of energy exchange um, is really important, and it really makes it worthwhile. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope, all of all the social medias of the world, uh, and the links are in the show description, so you can follow me there. Um, and let me know uh, what you're thinking about, and, and you know, message the board, share the, you know, we're in a group, there's a, there's a Facebook group, and we're in a book discussion right now. You guys need to get more active in the book discussion, my goodness. I do too, I do too. I just realized that for work, I have no less than five, like my day job, my work-a-day, 
I have no less than five books to get through. All right, so Nicole, this one's for you. So Nicole, this is the star. And the star is such a great, great card. Like it is one of my very favorite cards in the tarot. And it is one that it just doesn't come up enough. And so thank you very much for allowing it to come up tonight. Um, so um, the star card is about the kind of, um, it, it's kind of, I want you to think, we're going to talk about it in terms of rider weight. I'm going to tell you how the symbology, or this, I hate that word, the symbolism, one of my teachers used the word symbology, drove me crazy, but now it's like stuck in my head. But the symbolism of this card mirrors that card. So in the rider weight, the star card is about a, a balancing of or a, such a fruitfulness or over abundance of spiritual energy that you're able to take from spirit and pour it into the physical world and affect things in the physical world. So Nicole, this is your messaging, right? That right now, your spiritual life and your physical world life are so deeply, deeply connected that you're able to achieve great things. So the star card here, the imagery is about achievement. It's about achievement. And so this is about you being able to affect wonderful things because your spiritual life is dialing up, your physical world life is dialing up, and the star card suggests to you that there is an achievement that you're going to earn for this, right? It's the bringing together, the, the real harmony of our spirituality and our physicality and allowing our spiritual world to fill up the physical world and our physical world to be part of our spiritual world. And through that, you're able to accomplish great things like medals. So go get yourself a medal, Nicole, pin it on and enjoy it. That's what's going on for you. This brings us to Desiree. Desiree, who we said we might not get to. So if somebody knows Desiree, let her know that we did get to her um, toward the end of the show. You're so, oh, thanks, Daryl, for joining. I'm glad that it did make sense, and I'm glad that you could join us for Tarot Tuesday. That's really, really cool. Thank you. All right, so Desiree, this one's for you. If you're on the feed, that's great. If not, you'll catch it in the playback, and it is the Knight of Wands. So again, the night is about change, and wands is about work. It's the things we do to get the things we want. And the night for you, Desiree, signals that there needs to be a change in how you work. You are still here. <clears throat> okay, we'll do it quick so you get it. It's a change in your effort. So you need to be kind of, it's a fun card. You need to be looking for a change in how you spend your energy, your effort your work, your tasking. So to me, this sounds like a change in your job or at least a change in the direction of your career, right? So, or not at least, that would be the big thing or at least a change in your job. And that's kind of what I feel like for you is that the change, the Knight of Wands is riding in to say, God damn it, Desiree, it's time for a change. And you need to start looking for a uh, new employment. I think in this case, that's more fulfilling, that's more adventurous, that takes you into some different directions and allows you to feel a little bit more fulfilled and a little bit less maybe like you've been eating like zombies every damn day. Well, thanks, Kathy. That's very sweet of you. So that's for you, Desiree. So hopefully we got that in before the 1% dropped. All right, this brings us to Natasha. We had a very specific question. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Let's see. Well, we almost dropped the whole deck. That would have been a mess. We'd have had to read all the cards. We'd have had to read all the cards. You're very welcome, Desiree. So good luck to you. Good luck on your new job. Good luck in your new effort, your work, the change that you're coming up with. So it's the two of hazards for you, um, Natasha. So again, hazards is about resources. And the two of hazards suggests that you're kind of, um, res so resources, this is time, energy, money. It's the things you use to get the things you want, right? Um, and so the two of hazards 
suggests that you've been kind of, you've just begun or you are beginning to go down a new path with your resources. So Natasha, if we want to read that in the context of your question of, will you get this new job? The two of hazards would suggest that you've already put some energy into that. You've already put some resource into that and that you're going to continue down that path. The two of hazards suggest that we're going to take the next step here, but it also suggests that you want to be a little bit mindful of, of what's happening. Be careful, you know, keep your, keep your zombie on a leash, Natasha, you know, don't go too crazy. So you want to be a little bit reserved. You want to be a little bit measured because I think what's coming next again, we've already seen it tonight, the three of hazards where there's a little bit of frivolousness and then the four of hazards were like, whoa, we just ate all that food, and then so on and so forth. So I think for you, Natasha, yes, you've already put in the one of hazards. The two of hazards is what's up next. Um, you just want to be a little bit careful about that. So hopefully that rings true. Uh, certainly is about your resources and your energy and where you're putting your energy. So you're on a new path with that. Yes. At least that's what the tarot say. Hopefully that's true. Hopefully that's true. And uh, I trust that you'll come back and let us know, you know, message the page or join the group and let us know. Uh, that would be great. All right. Mike, and you got your wish. You got your wish. We still need to get your shift changed. We still need to get your job changed so you can get to the show earlier because we don't know if we're, we'll be able to do this all of the time. All right, so Nike, and this one's for you. This is the last ring of the night. Thank you all so much for joining me. Remember to like, follow, subscribe to me on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and YouTube. Lots of wonderful things happening. Let me know what you think of the Manifestations podcast. Join the Facebook group. Let me know what your thoughts are on the book discussion. So for you, Nike, and it's the Four of Swords. You as well, Christina. It's the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords, again, Swords is about uh, thoughts, ideas, right? So what we're moving on. And the Four of Swords suggests that you've been kind of mulling through, and you can see it in the iconography or the, in the symbolism of this card. You've really had a lot in your mind, Nike. And, um, you did miss yours, Nicole. It's probably about maybe 10 or 12 minutes back. Um, but, but the replay is available on YouTube shortly after this, as well as on the Facebook page. So the Four of Swords for you, Nike. New job, crazy schedule, there you go. And you've got a lot in your mind. You can see the soldier laying there thinking about what's been, what's been done, what's not been done. There's just all these thought projects. But, but, and this is important, Nikon, despite the stress, despite all the things that are going on in your head and in your scope, so to speak, that you are making progress. It isn't about absolute completion right now. It's about doing what you can while you can. Tomorrow, there will always be more. There will always continue to be more to do and that you might not be, you're never going to reach a sense of full completion. So it's about, for you right now, it's about adjusting your mindset. Yes, you're doing well. Yes, you're doing the best you can. No, you will never finish this. Like it's never going to reach a conclusion that you are going to be satisfied with. If you kill 10 out of 100 zombies, tomorrow you'll kill 10 out of 100 zombies. There'll be 10 more, 12 more, whatever. There's always going to be work for you to do. And it's best just to put your effort into that kind of daily grind and best to focus on what you can do while you can do it. And that, I think, is a good message for you and for all of us, that we can do what we can. We can only do what we can do, gang. Um, so that's, that's where it's at. Um, so again, thank you so, so much for joining me on Tarot Tuesday. We are here every Tuesday, unless I unless I take a week off. We are here every Tuesday, U.S. Eastern Time at 9 p.m. Join me live. Join early, get in on the list, and I absolutely do appreciate it. Gang, you know that, <clears throat> you know that I love doing Tarot Tuesday, and I do love it because of you. You make this so much more worth it. I'm humbled that you would continue to come back or you would join the show for the first time. Thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week filled with love and success and joy. Be good, be well, be good to one another. I think that that's really important, especially now in our lives. Thank you, friends. <laughs>